you're doing DIY projects, eventually you're gonna get to a part where you're like, I need to cut something and I don't have any tools to cut. And what tool would I even use to cut? So we're gonna take a step back and we're gonna talk about the basics. So this video is gonna be all about the jigsaw. So stick with me, cause you're gonna learn a lot. And by hopefully the end of this video, you feel comfortable, you feel confident to actually pick this thing up and cut something and make something with it. So let's get started because we got a lot to cover. So before we jump into the hows and the whats of using a jigsaw, let me tell you that we're gonna use the Ryobi brand of power tools and we're gonna use them for three reasons. Number one, I partner with them and so they provide a lot of the tools that I need to get my projects done, which is awesome. And the second reason is when I first started learning how to use power tools several years ago, this is the brand that I started learning on. So I've never used any other brand of power tools. So, you know, you tend to stick with what you're comfortable with, right? And then the third reason is, you know, you know, I'm a DIY blogger that promotes being as thrifty as you can when it comes to your home. So why would I recommend a brand that costs you hundreds and hundreds of dollars? I don't. I'm going to recommend Ryobi because not only do I think that they're affordable, but they have enough power to get the job done. So I use them in all my projects. I've never had any complaints. I love working with them and I love the tools. So this is what you'll see sprinkled throughout my garage, all the, the lime green. So anyway, let's jump right into it. Let's start talking about the parts of the jigsaw and why you even need a jigsaw for your DIY toolbox. So let's start off talking about why you even need a jigsaw for your DIY toolbox. Well, eventually you're gonna to wanna to do more than just paint and refinish furniture. A lot of times with DIY, after you've sort of mastered the painting and refinishing, you wanna start building things. You wanna start cutting the legs off of furniture and repurposing and upcycling. So you need a tool that's gonna to allow you to, to cut, right? So I always recommend the jigsaw for cutting, especially if you're new and you've, you do not have any experience. It's less intimidating. And if you compare it to the circular saw, you can see why it looks less intimidating, right? Which blade is bigger, the circular saw or the jigsaw? Well, it's pretty obvious. So we're gonna set that aside. Eventually we will cover the circular saw and you'll get comfortable using that. For now, we'll put it aside. But this is a tool that once you get comfortable with it, you will feel like you can move on to the next cutting tool and you can add to your DIY toolbox. So the things that you can cut with this include wood, plastic, metal, and all of these things are here on the side of the jigsaw. And this will show you all the things that you can cut and it's very versatile. Some of the things that you can do with a circular saw where you can cut at 45 degree angles, a lot of people don't know that you can, you can actually do that with a jigsaw. So just by making some adjustments and we'll go through that in a little bit, but you can adjust this base so that and we'll show you, I'll show you how to remove the, and insert a blade. But with a jigsaw, you can cut not only at 90 degree angles, but you can also cut at 45 degrees, 15 degrees. You can do beveled cuts and we'll go through that as well. So this is a tool you definitely need. If you are, if you are totally new to, to power tools, you have to start with a jigsaw. Yeah. So another reason you wanna get a jigsaw is because you can do decorative intricate cuts. Now, if you've ever gone to Pinterest, you may have seen people doing decorative wall signs, anything for their child's room with their name and these intricate cuts. Well, if you have a scroll saw, you can do that. But if you don't have a scroll saw, you can actually use your jigsaw using a scroll blade. And with that blade, it allows you to make these tight turns so that you can cut out any intricate pattern in your wood. And we'll go through blades in just a moment. Let's talk about the parts of the jigsaw because before you can use this tool, you have to know what everything is. And I can tell you, it's not as intimidating as it seems. So we'll go through this pretty quickly. Well, let's start with the, let's start with the battery. So this is a battery operated, battery powered power tool. And the thing I like about the Ryobi tools is that I can just pop this battery on the, the battery port and I've got instant power. So at the top of the jigsaw, you're gonna feel this little spring-loaded lock. Okay, this little lever lock thing here, this is what's gonna keep the jigsaw blade in place and locked when you are cutting. So as the spring-loaded lock is pushed up and parallel with the, the blade guide, all I need to do is slip my blade through the guide, insert it as far as I can, 
and then I can just release. And when I do that, it's gonna lock this blade in place. I'm gonna give it a tug, and when I give it a tug, it's not budging, which tells me that it's inserted properly. So to remove my blade, I'm gonna make sure that I've taken the battery out of the jigsaw. We do not want a battery in there while we're touching the blade. The battery's sitting next to us. Now all we need to do is push this lock lever up again. We're gonna make sure that we have a hold of the blade. Just push up to release, it pops right out, and let go. That's it. This is the base, this has to lie flat. Whenever we're cutting, it has to lie flat. So make sure that your base is secure, that right here on the back, it says zero. That means you're cutting at a 90 degree angle. Now I mentioned to you earlier that you can cut at a 45 degree, 15 degree, you can cut at an angle with a jigsaw. And a lot of people don't know that. On the back of the jigsaw, there is a little hex key. It's tucked right here. And with this hex key, and I always have a problem getting it out for some reason, I can never pull this thing out. Come on, come on out, come out, come out. Ah, I got it. <laughs> so with this hex key in the back, I can take this out and then I can make adjustments on the bottom of this jigsaw in order to cut at a 45, 15, whatever degree I want, up to 45 degrees. When I turn my jigsaw over, I can take this hex key and start to loosen up these two hex bolts, going counterclockwise and not dropping it, and going counterclockwise. And as I loosen this up, you'll see the plate starts to slide. The base will start to slide. So as you can see, now my jigsaw is moving back and forth, right? So here on the back, it actually tells you the degree. So at zero degrees, that's cutting at a 90 degree, just a straight, simple angle. You got 15, 30, and 45 degrees on the back. So whatever degree that we want to cut at, let's say we want to cut at I don't know, let's say we want to do 45 degrees. What we'd have to do is set our angle at 45 so that this dial in the back shows that we're at 45 degrees. And then we have to tighten up the hex, the hex screws, making sure that that dial is on the 45 so that we get a true 45 degree cut. We're gonna tighten that. And now if I were cutting a piece of wood, I'd be cutting at a 45 degree angle, just like that. Pretty amazing, right? Nobody knows that you can do that with a jigsaw. Now, when you're cutting, the jigsaw is gonna be in this position. And with it in this position, we can actually see some of the adjustments here on the side. Now, you wanna make your adjustments before you do anything, right? So if you know that you're gonna be cutting a piece of wood, let's say we've got a piece of three quarter inch wood, we know that we're cutting wood. So we wanna make that adjustment here on the front and we'll turn the dial to either zero, one, two, or three. Well, we're gonna be cutting wood, so it's gonna be on three. Now, that's what I'm usually cutting, so for me, there's not many changes that I'm making throughout here. I'll just leave it on three. Other features I want to show you on the orbital jigsaw are two things. Number one, it does have a variable speed control here at the top. Just go ahead and do some scrap cuts first. Whenever you're working with a project, do some scrap cuts first. Make sure that it looks good, the settings are good before you work on your final project. Trust me, this is learning by experience. And the last feature I want to point out is the lock. This lock here is a switch that you so that you don't have to squeeze the trigger the whole time. Once once I push this trigger, I can push this lock and I'll be able to keep cutting comfortably without having to squeeze this trigger. This is important if you're doing a lot of big cuts, long cuts where your, your hand is gonna get tired from squeezing this trigger. Or if you're someone that maybe you don't have a lot of strength in your hands, you don't have to keep your finger on the trigger. Once I just depress this, it'll pop and the lock will come out. So that's it. Now let's talk about cutting because there's some really important things you need to know about the orbital jigsaw. So let's talk a little bit about jigsaw blades. This is where a lot of people get very confused and it's not it's not actually that confusing. There are different types of blades for the types of materials that you're cutting. So for example, if you are cutting metal, the blades will actually tell you that these are for metal. So all you have to do is look at the blade and it'll tell you what it's for.
for. For example, this one tells you that it's for wood. Now, here's another thing that you have to understand. Blades are all about teeth per inch, TPI. So the idea is that the less teeth you have, the more rough cut you're going to get. And it will tell you on here that this is a speed blade for wood. Now, if you've got something that has very few teeth, it's going to tell you that this is for for example, this is for metal, but it has very few teeth, so you're going to get a finer cut than if you were to use a speed blade for wood. So that's the only thing you have to remember is that TPI means teeth per inch. The more teeth you have, the more teeth you have, the finer cut. The less teeth you have, the more rough cut. And that matters because when you're working on a project and you want to just make a quick cut, it doesn't matter if you use a blade that has very few teeth or a lot of teeth because you just want to make a cut. But if you're doing decorative work, you want to make sure that your teeth are very plenty so that you get a nice smooth cut. So there is a brand of jigsaw blades that I found out about earlier this year and I absolutely love them. They're by Starrett and they're called Dual Cut. And let me tell you why this is so amazing because the way that a jigsaw cuts is it cuts when the blade is coming up. So a lot of the times what happens is that when the blade is coming up, the top part of your material chips. And so the dual cut actually cuts going down and when the blade is coming up. So that's why it's called dual cut. And what I have found from my experience is that you get a much cleaner cut when you're using the dual cut blades. So these are the blades that I highly recommend. You get a better cut. Now let's go actually do some cuts so you can see how well these blades perform and how you actually set up your workspace to do a cut with the jigsaw. So we are in my garage and we are ready to actually demo the jigsaw. But here's the thing. You have to have a place to work, right? Now, you don't have to have a garage like I do. I'm thankful that I actually had enough energy <laughs> to clean this thing out because there was no workspace in here at all. So I do have this cool table. I got it from Craig. I bought two of them, actually, and put them side by side. And I like this table because it has a lot of features, a lot of functions for me to like safely clamp things down. But please, do not feel like you need to have a table like this or a garage. If you have a dining room table, if you've got a folding workbench, some sawhorses, anything that you can create that's a stable surface is what you really need because you want to make sure you clamp your wood down or your, you know, whatever you're working on, whether it's wood, plastic, metal, have that thing clamped down because you do not want it flying everywhere, right? So that's the first thing. So let me show you my setup so you can see what I have going on here and how I actually clamp my work down when I'm using the jigsaw. So when I'm working on a project, I am really cautious about making sure, number one, that I've got my wood clamped down securely. This is a Craig Mo the, the Craig Mobile Project Workstation. I think it retails for, I don't know, maybe $150. I love it. Like I said, I bought two of them. The reason why I like it is because the, the Craig clamps actually attach to the table and slide right underneath. And so they're attached to the table. So whenever I I'm ready to cut something with my jigsaw or you know, even with my circular saw, I'm able to easily clamp it down to make sure that it's nice and secure. Now you don't, you know, you may not have this table and that's fine. And if that's the case, you could always get a regular table. You can still use these Craig clamps. I absolutely love them. I think they work great. And this is what I would use on any other surface. Um, you know, when I've worked on surfaces before and I did not have this handy little table, they work really great at clamping your wood down to, you know, maybe all you have is a dining room table. That's fine too. But you can also use some heavier duty if you have a big workbench. They have some big clamps like this. I find them, well, I don't, actually, I don't think I've ever even used these. But if you have a larger table that's thicker, then maybe you can't quite get your Craig clamp around, these C-clamps will do a really great job. And, you know, you might just have a bulkier bench. And, you know, as you can see, they adjust pretty easily. So invest in some clamps because you will need them whenever you are working with power tools, with the jigsaw, circular saw. You want to make sure this is stable. So this is pretty stable once I have both cl clipped down. That's not moving. You see, I'm actually pulling on that pretty hard and it's not coming off. That's what we want. 
Here's another option too. You can go to Home Depot and you can get some of these 50, I think they cost about $15 each. Maybe it was $30 for a set of two. You can get some saw horses like this. They're adjustable. You can raise them to whatever height you need them to be. And if you have something to weight them down, they're pretty sturdy. Get a piece of uh, plywood and you can create a very easy workstation. And here's the thing, because they fold up pretty easy, you can bring them out, work outside in your driveway, and then just fold them up, put them away, and you don't have to have you know, a garage where you're keeping all of your big tables out in the, in the way. So this is an option too if you do not have a lot of money or space. And you know I can't talk about a jigsaw without talking about safety too, right? So don't feel like you have to go and spend $30 on earmuffs. Actually, all you need to get are the little ear thingy, the little ear plugs. These actually work better than these. Jigsaws are super loud. You don't want that noise reverberating in your head, damaging your hearing. So make sure that you have some sort of hearing protection. And if you can double up and do ear plugs and the earmuffs, you're better off. Do not forget your eyeglasses. It doesn't matter if you wear regular prescription glasses, you have to wear these when you are working with power tools because these are shatterproof and I think your eyes are pretty important, right? So make sure you have these on. Loose jewelry, we're not trying to look cute. We need to make sure that we're safe. So we have loose jewelry removed, our hair is pulled up if it's long so it doesn't get caught in the blade, and we're wearing closed-toed shoes. Flip-flops, it's not good for power tools. So we are finally ready to get started with our first cut and I want to explain a little bit about how the jigsaw cuts, but let's do a sample first. Let's do a demo first and then you'll be able to see it in action. I've slowed this down to show you the movement of the blade. Most basic saws have blades that go up and down out of the saw, which is good for metal and scrolling in wood. But with an orbital jigsaw, the blade goes slightly forward and back, allowing for faster cuts and softer materials. And this also helps with removing chips from the blade path. Now the orbital action is adjusted with the orbital adjustment knob on the front of the jigsaw. And this depends on the materials that you're cutting. I also want to add that jigsaws are best used on thin materials. The thicker the material, you might experience something that's known as drift, and this is where the blade cuts accurately on top, but on the bottom, when you flip it over, it's crooked. This has happened to me many times. To prevent this, use good quality blades, keep the base flat, and test out the thickness of materials that you're cutting. So we have our battery out, we're ready to put our blade in. We'll put our blade in and give it a nice little tug, just as I showed you earlier in the tutorial. Give it a tug, make sure it's in there tight, and it is. Everything is tight, and now we're ready to put the battery in and do our first cut. Now here's what you have to remember before you get started. When cutting with a jigsaw, you wanna make sure that this base is on your project. Whether it's wood, plastic, metal, this base needs to be resting on there. You don't want the blade to actually touch this because we want that blade running at full speed before we make contact with this material. So let's go ahead and try it and we're just going to get started. Now that that blade is going full speed, we can actually go through and make our cut. We're going to let the blade do all the work. We're going to keep the base on the wood so it doesn't kick back at us. Now here's something really important. Now you notice that I let that piece fall and I let that blade stop before I bring this power tool up. Let me tell you why. The reason why is because the thing that people fear the most about power tools is what? The blade, right? They don't want to cut themselves. Well, that's understandable. So the reason why we let the blade stop first and then bring the tool up is so that we don't have a moving blade anywhere near our hands, our body, anywhere. So whenever you're cutting with a jigsaw, whether it's a circular saw, miter saw, let that blade fully stop before you lift it up. And if you do that, your chances are pretty good that you will have a safe power tools experience. Now here's the other thing I like to do too. I've got little kids and they're always 
within a step behind me somewhere. So whenever you are done with your tools, if, even if I'm just walking away to go into the house, I always pop out the battery, if I can get it out, <laughs> pop out the battery and set it aside. Maybe even put it you know, on the workbench. And the reason why is because you don't want little kids following behind you and coming around and saying, wow, power tools. So you can see you have to remove that battery. So remember when I told you about blades and how there's something called TPI, teeth per inch? Well, I'm actually gonna do a demonstration for you so you can actually see the results from using a blade that has very few teeth compared to using a blade that has a lot of teeth. Now keep in mind, this is the dual cut, so it cuts the wood and materials on the downstroke and the upstroke. This one is just gonna cut it on the upstroke, but you'll be able to see the difference between a very rough cut and a very smooth cut. So first, we're gonna do the blade that has very few teeth and you're going to see how rough of a cut it is. So now that we've done one rough cut, we're going to take our battery out, change our blade, but we want to be very careful because this blade is hot. We just cut some wood, so we're going to use a soft cloth, soft cloth, <laughs> to pull the blade out so we don't burn our fingers. And now we're gonna put in the dual cut blade, the one that I recommend, that has a lot of teeth and cuts on the upstroke and downstroke, and it gives you really smooth cuts. So with the blade on the right that has very few teeth, you can see that it was a fast, quick cut. The edges are very raw. There would be a lot of sanding you'd have to be doing if you use that for your project. Now the blade on the left, that's the dual cut. So of course it's gonna be a lot smoother, but it also has very few teeth. So that makes a big difference in the quality of the cut that you get. So think about the projects that you wanna do and what sort of results do you wanna get? Are you just wanting to cut a piece of wood really quick because it needs to be cut in half? Or are you really trying to create something that's nice and smooth? That will determine which blade you use. One more thing about getting a clean cut before we move on to the next demonstration is that sometimes people will tell you to put down a piece of like painter's tape on your cut line so that you can get a nice clean cut on both sides because generally when you use a jigsaw when you're using just regular standard blades you get a nice clean cut on the bottom and the top can get kind of chipped so some people will say oh just put down a piece of tape on top so you get a nice clean cut. You don't have to do that with these Star It dual cut blades. I found these at the Builder Show earlier in the year and I absolutely love them. I don't think I'll ever use another jigsaw blade other than these. So make sure you get those. Okay, so let's move on to the next part and I think that might be the final part, which is how do you actually cut shapes out of wood? Because that's something you can do with a jigsaw. So let me show you how to do that. So here's what happens many of times. You're working on a project, you need to cut out a shape, whether it's something that's intricate, whether it's just a circle, square, whatever. You can't do that with a lot of tools. You can't do that with a miter saw. So you need a jigsaw or a scroll saw. But jigsaw works perfect for this, and we're gonna use a scroll blade. But before we can even cut this, we actually need to drill a hole into the middle of this or to the side so that we can get the jigsaw in there and cut around. We're just gonna drill a hole maybe, eh, let's do it here. It doesn't really matter where we do it. There we go. Now that we have our pilot hole, we can actually put our scroll blade in. Now the scroll blade is gonna be very thinner. It has a lot of teeth. It's gonna give you a smooth cut. This is the dual cut. This is one of the dual cut blades. So again, I highly recommend it because it'll cut on the downstroke and the upstroke. It'll cut both ways like that. And it's a scroll blade. So it's gonna allow me to go around these corners, these edges easily than if I were to use, you know, say a blade that looked more like this. If I were to try to go around the curve, it would not work as well. So whenever you're doing rounded cuts, intricate cuts, make sure you're using a scroll blade. And these usually come in the pack. If you buy a pack of jigsaw blades, you can get these as part of the pack. So let's go ahead and put our blade in and let's cut around the circle. 
So to get started cutting, we're going to stick our blade right inside of that circle, that pilot hole that we drilled, and then we can just start cutting. Sometimes you have to make some adjustments because my jigsaw was getting in the way of the clamp, so you might have to move some things around. All right, so we're gonna <clears throat> change things around because we're not dealing with a huge piece of wood here and the clamp is getting in the way, so we'll just change it and cut from this side. Sometimes you do have to shift your work around several times just to, to make a full cut, depending on how it's clamped down. So we have a circle. Now is it perfect? No, but it looks pretty darn good. So we have a circle. We did a cutout with the jigsaw. And you know, it's not perfect. You know, a lot of times you have to practice using the jigsaw so you can get good at making these kind of cuts. I'm still not perfect, but I've definitely learned a lot from when I first started using it. And so just imagine all the cool things that you can cut out when you've got the jigsaw, when you're using your scroll blade, maybe you can print out something, some shape, some pattern and glue it down and then cut out the shape with your jigsaw. So there's so many things you can do. So the last thing that I'm going to demonstrate for you today is how to cut galvanized steel. So remember, we can cut this metal because we've got jigsaw blades specifically for metal. And we're going to use one that has a lot of teeth because we want this to be a fine cut. So let's go ahead and clamp it down, put the metal blade on there, and we're ready to cut this galvanized steel. We don't want this to hang off of the table too much because if you notice, it's pretty flimsy and we don't want that to be moving around. So we're gonna go ahead and put this a little closer to the edge of the table, making sure that we don't cut into the table. So before we get started, we wanna change the orbital action from three, which is where we were cutting wood, to zero, because we're gonna be cutting galvanized steel. Now we can put our blade in like we did earlier in the tutorial. Now we're ready, we can go ahead and pop in our battery and we can cut. So there you have it, we have cut metal. Now you just wanna be very, very careful with this because you can see that there are some sharp pieces here. So do not cut your fingers. If you are gonna be doing this uh, for any decorative labels or something, I would just get some very fine sandpaper and smooth that out. Make sure you don't scratch the metal, but just smooth out those edges so that you don't hurt yourself. So this wraps up this tutorial. I really hope that this was helpful. And unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do plastic for the demonstration, but if you can cut wood and you can cut metal, I can guarantee you will be able to cut plastic, whether it's PVC or some other kind of plastics. So I think this wraps up the tutorial. So that was a lot of information, right? Well, hopefully this tutorial is giving you the confidence and the skills that you need in order to move on to your next DIY project. It's all about taking the DIY to a whole nother level. And I think by getting some power tools in your toolbox, you will be ready for your next DIY project. So if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up be sure to share it with your friends right I know you have friends that want to learn how to use power tools too and leave a comment below let me know do you know how to use the jigsaw and if you don't what's stopping you from learning and I want to know what video do you want to see next which power tool are you most excited to learn how to use because I'll do a tutorial on that as well I'll see you next project and you can find me at thriftdiving.com bye